I'm here again in Brandon, Mississippi to drink scotch. You wouldn't believe it. I'm here to drink scotch because this man right here, Bobby from the Mississippi Sippers, said that he could convince me that scotch is good. He's going to convert me into a scotch enthusiast. What in the world makes you think you could do that? Because it's just good whiskey. Is it better than bourbon? That's how you look at it. There's bourbons that you don't like, bourbons you do like. There'll be scotches you like, scotches you don't like. What if I just don't like them? What if there are no scotches I like? You'll find one you like. There's too many of them not. You're guaranteeing today you're going to find me a scotch I'll I like. I'll find one you like. Out of one to 10, how much do I have to like it? At least eight. At least an eight. So we are guaranteed to have an eight. Now I had a working title for this video and we were going to go with are all scotch drinkers assholes. That was gonna be the working title of the video. And I know they're not, like Bobby's not. I know lots of scotch drinkers that are nice people, but based on my comments, scotch drinkers take themselves very, very seriously. And I've, I've been trying to figure out why. And I think this is one of the reasons I'm kind of scotch adverse. And it's because in movies and TV, bourbon is the tough guy drink, the cowboy, the, you know, the man that's gonna be in some fist fights and scotch, it's the sophisticated man's drink. If you're smooth and suave and sophisticated and cultured, you're gonna drink scotch. And so everybody who has an awful lot of their self-worth tied up in their image likes to think they're sophisticated and cultured and they drink scotch. And then they go into the comments and they hate on the bourbon drinkers. So we like to troll them a little bit. But every once in a while, you find somebody who's cool to hang out with and you agree to drink some scotches. And realistically, I'm not a tough guy. I'm not cultured or sophisticated either. It's easier to maybe fake like I'm cultured and sophisticated than it is to get into a bunch of fist fights. So we're gonna try, I wanna be on the scotch train. I told him five and he's already not listened to the rules. He's already picked six scotches that he's going to use to convince me to like scotches. What's the first one? Tell me about it. First one's gonna be the Glen Levitt 18 year. It is just aged in normal European oak. So it'll be soft, it's the lowest proof. It'll be an 80 proof. So it'll be a good way to start into it so it's not blowing out your palate. It's got more age on it than most of the rest of them that I'm gonna chose. So it'll be a little softer, easier to drink for you. So we're getting into the easy one first. You're starting yes. me in kindergarten first. Yep. So kindergarten scotch right here, Glen Levitt 18. All right, so what kind of notes am I supposed to pick up on this? This one you'll get a little bit more of the barrel tannins it'll be the sweet the caramel because it's older some a lot of that maltiness that you that you've said you don't like it'll be toned down so more of the actual barrel comes into it so to me i think it'd be a little bit more traditional to an american style because it's got that age in it bringing in the barrel and it's not a finishing barrel so it's not sherry or pork finished it's actual just oak barrel it'd be a little bit closer to what you're used to for a scotch it smells all right almost a little citrus i don't know if y'all picked that up as well you say that, and the tasting notes from Glen Levin on that's uh, like an orange zest. Yeah. It's not the fruit, but the, the peel. Yeah. The t on the taste, I, I definitely get that. I would have said more orange peel on the this, taste. And this one is considered the space side region, so that's the difference with scotches. With bourbon, it's just in the U.S. Then you have your Tennessee whiskey, and you have your Texas whiskey, and you have your Mississippi whiskeys. Whereas in Scotland, depending on where it's distilled, which region is in, is what's really determines a lot of the flavor because it depends on which, if it gets more wind, more salt, more rain, if it's peated, unpeated, what actually smokes it, if they use botanicals or if they use the, the peat from the ground. So this one's a, this is a space side, so it's known to be a lot lighter and easier to drink. So I love how he mentioned all the regions where there's whiskey and he threw in Mississippi. Like that's just a common whiskey right. region that everybody gets whiskey from. That's yeah. like the benefit of being the home team here, I guess. Okay, I don't hate it. It's not an eight. This is a solid five, maybe six. It might be, we'll go with a five. With this one being a, a solid five, are we going up from here? You think we're gonna get better? I think so. So what's next? We'll go with a Macallan 12 double cast. The Macallan is a Highland. This one will be 86 proof and it's done in European and American oak. So what does a Highland mean? As far as how it's gonna taste, what does that mean? It'll be a light like the previous one you had. It's just a larger section of that region. And Glen Levitt was a space side? Space side, which is in theory the same area. The space side region is just a smaller subset. And you said this one's double oaked. Yes. So what were the what were the casks again? European and American oak. Okay. And they're new, not used. A lot of scotches use bourbon barrels. 
X bourbon barrels. Yeah. The McAllen uses new all new barrel. All right. McAllen 12. This one's definitely light on the nose. It's missing that kind of fruitiness, that citrus I liked on the last one. They call it sherry, sherry barrels, but they're not <clears throat> ex-sherry barrels. So like you, a lot of times you'll put your whiskey or your scotch into a sherry barrel and let it finish. These are new oak barrels. The European oak was sherry, so that it got washed and dumped. It was never aged in it, so it never So they just put it. sherry they in just it? Just give it, they give it a little hint of softness. I don't think I like this one as much as the last one. Really? Yeah, don't think I like those ones. I like the citrus. Like the citrus gives it a little little extra to me. And I was thinking you would actually like them, this one more. Really? Why did you think that just the oakiness, just the more, yeah, a little bit more, more bourbon? More, bur yeah. more barrel to it. It's the sherry in this one. I mean, like when you say it's been sherried, I taste the sherry. And yeah. It's almost artificial in that regard. That Glen Levitt's pulling this natural orange peel flavor out of just the whiskey and the finish. What's the proof on those two? Feels like that 12 is a little hotter. It, this is 86 and 80. The majority of your scotches are in the 80, 86 range. And then there's a lot of them that'll be in the 92. It's once you get above that standard range, they're fewer and far between. You don't see as many of them. Like you find bourbons that are 100, 110 proof, 120 proof. You don't find as many scotches unless you get special releases. That definitely drink hotter than 86 proof though to me. Like it, it felt, I thought it was going to be well on into the 90s. That's the barrel. Is it the, okay. That's, that's that double barreling. So the next one is the tried and true you see everywhere, Balvenie Caribbean cask. It's a 14 year. It's done in used bourbon and then it is finished in West Indian rum. Rum casks. Yeah. Excellent. But so instead of, a lot of times you think Jamaican rum, Puerto Rican rum, this is West Indian rum. This one's also 86 proof. This is one you'll find, you can find this anywhere. So you'll find Glen Levitt 18 in a lot of your stores. You'll find McAllen 12s. That's more of a standard release. They have a 12 double cask and they have a 12 sherry oak, which is an oak barrel and a sherry barrel. So that's what I try to do is go with something that if you walked into a store, maybe not every store, but you know, you'll find the majority of these in stores, depending on where you're at. In restaurants, I mean, yeah. you know, those are all, the first three are definitely com yeah, pretty you, common you, bottles. You would definitely find that the restaurant has a nice bar with a good selection, you'll find a McAllen of some sort. It could be the 12s, it could be the 15s or an 18, but you'll find a good McAllen. So what region are we in with the Balvini? Balvini's also a space island. I mean, that's definitely the best one so far. I feel like we're cheating by watering it down with rum, though. It still has, though, for me, I don't know if it's just pot-stilled malts or what, but there's like a harshness to all scotches that are just instant turnoff. Like, that's what makes me not get into scotches. It could be pot stills because... Could be pot stills I, in I, general. Your Irish yeah. whiskeys have that same note to them. Yeah, Irish whiskeys, same problem. Well, that, that mezcal was really smoked, though, that we, we sampled at the... You can find a lot of rums are pot still, but if you get a good rum that doesn't have a lot of sweetness to it, it'll have that same kind of note in it because they're using the same type of steel. But we're also, this Balvini Caribbean cask is very bourbony. I mean, you're, you're still getting the harshness of the scotch that you're tasting, but we're also getting a lot of bourbon flavors out of this one. Trying to decide where I'm putting it. I mean, we're at a five, it's above that. Don't rate it yet till okay. you try the rest because you may rate this something and you try something else and when you think about it, you're like, oh, well, I actually like this one better, but I like this one the same rating as I did the other ones. A lot of tobacco on this yeah. one. So yeah, kind of wait and see, see how you tobacco. rate them when you get done. So the next one, we're going to do another Highland. So this one is a special release, but it's still on store shelves in multiple areas. It's a Glamorangie. It's called the Tale of Cake. Well, I mean, sounds good. I like cake. It is. Fat people like cake. They don't put an age statement on it. So I couldn't tell you exactly how old it is, but they do finishing in this is in Takaji barrel. Now I've had Takaji Penelope's that are real good. I got a, a barrel bourbon that's a Takaji finish. I really like the Takaji. I figured this one might be a fun one to put in the mix. Even though it's finished and it's a limited release, it's still on shelves where you can buy it. It's not like it's, you know, hidden away. You can walk into, uh, I know a lot of Total Wines still have it on the shelf. Well, I didn't put any limitations around how rare the bottle's got to be. You just got to get to an eight. I just tried to make sure if something, if you liked it, you could go out and buy one. Right. You know, I'd hate for you to find one you like, which, you know, we've sampled stuff, you know, just in passing that you've liked that come come to find out you can't get it no more. And it's like, well, I really like this. Now I can't, I can't get it. So I wish I'd have never had it. Takaji wine is a 
sweet wine out of Hungary. Is that correct? I see where they, that does smell sweet. like cake. Yeah, sweet white you wine. You get it in the nose, but mm. you don't get as much, but it's real tart. Not maltiness, but the, it's real tart. Yeah. It's got a lot interesting, of, like it's interesting. Of, I don't know if I love it, but I don't hate it for sure. Sweet, yeah. a little tart. And honestly, that, that kind of sweet tartness kind of tames down what I don't like about scotches. A lot of scotches aren't traditionally just straight whiskey. A lot of them have some kind of barrel finishing because not many of the Scotch distilleries have cooperages that make new barrels. Most all of your bourbon barrels in the U.S., after they're dumped, they get shipped to Scotland and that's the barreling they use. They'll take those barrels, they'll take them apart, they'll sand them, put them back together. They're using ex-bourbon barrels. That's why you see a lot more finishing there. So I think this is my least favorite. It does taste like cake. Yeah. But I think that's what I don't like about it. Man does it like cake. But it's different. Some to it is. There. It is. It is a different twist. Your cake was 92 proof. Okay, That's stepping higher. up a bit. So the next one, we're going to go with the Buna Haben 12. Buna Haben. I know Josh has had this, but I know it's been a long, long time. Back when he was trying to convince me that I love scotch. <laughs> and we, Did it, was he able to convince you? I mean, I, I, I've always appreciated scotch. I appreciate all liquor, but yeah, no, I don't own many bottles of scotch. He doesn't own many, but there is some that he had. He. He does like. If you don't like it enough to drink it more often, should you have a whole collection of it? No, if you find one or two you like, why not have one or two in your collection, but you don't have to buy tons of them. I like drinking Bobby's Scotch. Yeah, that's, it's kind of like a swimming pool. You know, better, what's better than owning a swimming pool is having a friend who has a swimming pool. Right. It's kind of the same with a Scotch collection, I think. This is very satisfying. I love sitting here doing this, but this is about all the scotch I really need. I mean, like, I don't have to have it. I, I have a bourbon collection like this that I have amassed with tequila and rum. I mean, yep. scotch is just I not would, my, my I time. wasn't a rum guy until I started trying rums with them. Now I'm, I've am i got a lot of rums now. It also depends on mood. Sometimes you just, you drank enough bourbon, you don't want to drink a bourbon, but I'm, I'm going to have a rum or a tequila or, or a scotch or something else. It just makes it fun to change around. Where are we? We're at the Bona Hobbin. Yeah, this is... I don't think we're going uphill here. What region? That's a different region. Where are we? It's an isla, but it's an unpeated isla. Okay. I was going to say, the islas get peated, peated, don't they? But this one is, Buna Haben does not peat theirs. So it's distilled just the same as any other scotch. They don't add any peat to it. So there I've been listening, Bobby. <laughs> I, I knew that isla gets peated normally. It's X bourbon and X sherry barrel. Okay. So it went into the bourbon barrel and then it went into a sherry barrel. To me, that's the worst one we've had so far. Really? Yeah, not a fan of that one. I wanted to try a different region. I, I, I get it. I, I know, get it. I know. That one's just all rubber band. I know you don't like. It's, it's, really it's just like a band aid. Yeah. And here's what's funny: it's shitting because there's no peat in it. Yeah, generally, the peat. Yeah. Generally, it's generally it's the peat rubber band's the peat. Well, the peat makes it worse. Now, you know, you get the smoky rubber band, well, but this has all the undertones the without the smoke on it. Well, but because remember, I was saying where they're at, the isla where it's at, it gets a lot of. Uh, ocean wind. So generally, most of your scotches that come from the Isla region, they're a lot more saltyish. They yeah. got a lot more salt. Maybe what it is. And that's yeah. probably what you're getting. You're getting that that uh, dry sea salt taste to it. So yeah. rubber bands are salty. That's what we our our band aids are salty. That's what we've learned. Well, it is it is fun to separate that flavor from the peat, though. I mean that we're actually yeah. tasting Isla without juice the, and Isla scotch salt. without the overly smoky, peaty. Flavor. Most people, when they think Isla, they're thinking your Lafroigs, which, like you say, those really smell, when you open that up, it will smell like burnt rubber. The Ardbegs, their Islas, they tend to end up having that iodine smell that you think, that I know you know, you've recognized. The Lagalubans are a little softer, but they are peated. They're all from the same regions. But this, it's nice to find one. Uh, all your Port Charlottes are the same way, but it's nice to find one that's barrel finished but unpeated just to see what it's like. I found out what it's like, and it's no bueno. Uh, uh, uh. All right, this is the this, this is the big is dog. Good. This is the one. Your Buna Hobbin was also 92 proof. You said five. I wanted to throw one thing that's a little on the softer side. It has a higher proof. What's the proof on this one? 103. Which is somewhat of an anomaly just in the Scotch world. I mean, like these 100 plus bottles don't come by readily. And I, you know, I always wonder if Scotch is don't usually sell at high proof because they don't taste good at low proof. Why would you add more flavor? I, I know, just go ahead and put the hate comments down, put it down in the comments, let me know. Well, the high proof ones are the ones that are super sought after. They're, they go into the collections and those are the ones and 
multiple years down the road, the difference in high-end scotches is they don't go up by $100 a year. You could buy a bottle today that you spend say $80, $90, on. In two years, it's a $700 bottle. No special hype. It's because of the way they do things in batches, yearly released in batches. So you never know what you get. It's more like wine. Yeah, it, 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 yeah, and it's pricing, it is more like wine. If you go and look at scotch prices, you can go on McAllen's, you go from $60, $70 into the five figures real easy. You don't see bourbons going in the fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars range when they sell. You do with scotches. But there's scotches out there that are 60, 70, 80 years old. And convince me that guy's not an asshole. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. There you go. Maybe not all of them, but we found one, the guy who bought that, that for fifty thousand dollars. On this one, it's a Glen Scotia. It's a Cableton. It's another island, south, southernmost islands. Like I said, it's 103 proof. It's not finished, but it's in high toast barrels. This smells nice. A little spicy. For me, it, get, it gets me in the side of the tongue and it's more of a dark fruit. Yeah, still that that I do not like there. But other than the thing I don't like, I like everything else. The problem is, is I, they're all that, right? Yeah. So there's the only, the only scotch I would find that I would just fall in love with and be a 10 out of 10 wouldn't taste like scotch well, because yeah. all scotches taste like that. And I do have a, sink, a scotch, it's a 12 year Port Dundas, but it's not malt. It's green. Okay, let's try that one. You want to try that yes. one? Yes. How does that How does that be a scotch, though, if it's... Um... Um, what people don't think about scotches are, bourbon is only a U.S. product. You can't make bourbon anywhere else. You can make the exact same everything else. It just can't be called bourbon. Scotch is just whiskey distilled in Scotland. There, That's the only thing. Oh, really? So this is single malts. This is done in Israel. Single malts done in India. So... Scotch is just a region where the whiskey is. This is just how they just- So it doesn't have to be a single malt or a malt whiskey at all. No, this is a 12 year old grain one. Let's look at the tasting kit over here, just so y'all get an idea of how professional he is. This is how you're supposed to do it when it comes to tastings, right there. All the glasses. Where are you going with this many glasses, man? When the sippers get together, we'll do blind tastings. We'll get together, have food, and we'll set up a bl complete okay. blind tasting. Okay. One of Did us will you? choose. Five, five bottles. We don't tell anybody what it is. Okay, how many people do you normally have at one of those? 12. Okay. Well, right, we the kit's made for up to 15, just so if we had, if we wanted to, we could. Yeah, yeah, some guests. And it's fun, to, and if you do it that way, the last one we did, it was there was three scotch drinkers, everybody else was bourbon drinkers, and we did a blind, nobody knew what was in the blind but me, and when it, when it was said and done, the Japanese whiskey was the favorite. So tell me about the sippers. Like this is, this is not a, it's not a sponsored post, but we, uh, you know, we're over here hanging out with Spillway. Y'all do a lot of stuff. I know y'all are doing a lot of things with Crittenton's. Like y'all keep coming up in all of these topics, but we've never really actually talked about what the Mississippi sippers are. We're just a group of 12 friends. Oh, we, we get together, we do tastings. We started out just one person knows somebody and then they know somebody, somebody else and come to find out Two of these people knew each other, and we just started getting together and hanging out. And then we go see Josh and the guys at Spillway, and that's all we do. It's, it's not like it's not a big group. It's just like I said, twelve people that sit around. And we had a bright idea to start trying to do barrel picks. We talked to Josh, and then because several of us drink scotches and rums and tequilas, we started to think about doing the barrel finishes, and that's what we started doing with thematic Crittenden. We're not a big group. We're not any kind of anything involved in it, any kind of business involved in it. It's just 12 people that get together and have, get together, have food, have a few drinks, socialize and have fun. So mo mostly folks here in Brandon? Uh, all over the central Mississippi area. Okay. So if you want to be a part of the Mississippi Sippers, you just have to find one in the wild and become friends with them. That's the only way. And then there's a hazing ritual. I don't know what it is though. You have to go through all of the art bags. Yep. You apparently have to you have to like scotch, or at least say you do. You don't actually have to like it. Okay, you found a scotch already, but it's not a, like it's not what you would traditionally consider. It's still, but it's still pot it still smells still, great. So you get the same. Like I could taste the pot still. There's like a yeah, it's a like, darkness yeah. to the flavors there, right? Well, plus we did but that. it doesn't have the harshness to it. This tastes like a Canadian whiskey. I have a lot of Canadian, some American lights that kind of have similar yeah, flavors. Yeah. yeah. I still don't think I would call it an eight, but that is the only one that if I were just sitting at home and it were sitting there, I might go back and have another pour of it by myself, not trying to tell a story or have it. Like the scotches I have, most of which I got from Josh over here, 
Um, <laughs> because we, of Bobby. Yeah, because of Bobby. We just drink them when we have people over to tell a story. Like, I'm just not going to go down there and have a pour of it. This would probably be the only one that I would because it's not a scotch. I mean, it may technically be a scotch, but it doesn't taste like a scotch. All right, so my next challenge would be to compare it to the hedonism. I mean, the the compass box hedonism is probably that you, like. that you okay. Yeah. Do you have a hedonism here? Oh, yeah. We limited it to six for to five for a reason, and now we're on eight. Just so you know, okay? That's how that's how this goes. This is one I have at home, compass box hedonism. Yeah, see that smells the best already. That's better than anything else you've given us. That's right, and this is this, but this is because it doesn't taste like scotch. And honestly, like it even like even at home, scotch. at home I get a little bit of a, the the off putting notes, but because we've gone through so many more like scotch forward things, like if you'd have handed me that right now, I'm not sure I'd have picked it up as a scotch. If someone's not a scotch drinker, and they're you're you're trying to get into scotches. In all honesty, your blended scotches are the best way to go. They'll take scotch from multiple regions. So in this could be some Cableton, some Highland, some Speyside, there's some Isla in it, all blended together, and then they barrel finish it. What you don't like about this one and what you like about this one, when they go together, they kind of, one cancels out what you didn't like about the other one and actually brings out parts of the other one you didn't know that you liked. So Compass Box is a perfect one to do that with. Any one of their line, they do multiple regular releases, cash strength releases, special releases. They're everywhere. You can find them in most all liquor stores. Some of your Johnny Walkers, people may give Johnny Walker grief just because, you know, it's, you know, considered you know, a cheap bottle. But, you know, Johnny Walker Green, Johnny Walker 18, those are really good bottles. And if you like them, what people don't realize about most all of your Johnny Walkers, there's a lot of peated whiskey inside of Johnny Walker, but you'd never realize it's in there because there's a lot of Space Side and Highland in it which brings out all the sweetness and everything else that's in the blend. So this tastes like coconuts to me. Yeah, yeah. And I like coconuts. It tastes like ladies dancing in the sun. I've never tasted ladies dancing in the sun, but I've sniffed them before. So my wife watches these. I have not, it was a joke, but sorry, sorry, Jill, it was a joke. I'm not going around sniffing people. I don't do that. Lord. What's fun about this and what, what you went through today is for someone who really, you know, is stated, you don't really don't like scotch. You could see in some of these scotches now, there is pieces, parts, and flavors, and finishes that you can appreciate and like. Do you like all of them? No. Do you find some you like? Yes. Do you find some you might try something that's kind of like that from maybe somebody else, or some other region, or some other area, or actually some other country if you're just into the singles, single malts. So it's kind of nice to see, you can get a little bit more appreciation for another kind of whiskey that you may not necessarily be into. I feel like he won, but he cheated a little bit. Like he might've got me on the, ex seven's close enough, I'll give it to him, on the compass box hedonism, but he already knew I kind of liked it, but I like it more today than I do at home. So I've killed my taste buds with a bunch of scotch, and now we've got to a decent one after my taste buds have quit, and it's pretty dang good. So you win. Now there was something else we were supposed to try, right? What is Well, thus Justin suggested you try this one. What is that? It is just a whiskey, an Adactivo whiskey. They are a tequila company, but they take their extra añejo tequila barrel. When they get done aging their extra añejo tequila, they distill whiskey and age it in those barrels, and that's what that is. All right, pour me a little bit of that. It kind that's of smells like apples and pears. It's yeah. sweet like an apple, and then it finishes like a pear. Pour it over ice. I guarantee it'd be great in a cocktail. I don't know how expensive the bottles are, but... Yes, sweet and delicious, but, I mean, we just poured a bunch of scotch yeah. down our... So, tr so true. <laughs> do, not, do not trust our judgment on this. <laughs> Tastes like apple and pear. It could be the harshest thing ever, and yeah. we just drank a bunch of scotch. I, already, I did tell y'all my taste buds quit, right? So don't go buy this bottle based on my recommendation right now. Just don't do it. Um, let's see. If I'm going to rank them, I'm probably going to go with the Balvany first. Probably move that to number one. Probably the cake. I like the cake. And then... You just throw the rest of them away. This one, I, I can see you not liking the region. These oh, are okay. Not, those are okay. Like, they're okay. You but I, you like this one like, more than that. I said they were all right. Like, those those two, the McAllen and the Glenlivet, if I were, if I sat down for dinner and somebody handed me one of those, I would finish it. 
but I wouldn't ask for a second one. I would have thought you would have liked the Macallan more. I, like I would, I, I wouldn't have that cake again. Honestly, I'd throw really? it at the end. That, that's the one I'd get rid of. So, are you saying my taste buds quit before I got to the cake? Is that what y'all are saying? No, it's just it's the, I like think, I appreciate the value of the scotches. It's in there, and it's over finished, and the sweetness is off putting. So here's the thing: maybe I like it because the it's over finished, and they're trying to hide all the scotch. But you got to remember, if you look on any one of these walls, most all of those scotches that you see are finished. So, yeah, but I mean, he's, he just said so, that one's over finished, which so is probably him, why I like him. It. It's over finished for you. Yeah. It may not be that. That's a Penelope over there that is finished in the same kind of barrel. That was the Takaji. Mm -hmm. We drank enough. Yeah. We drank, we had a limit for a reason. We get together with this group. Sometimes it goes downhill real. You can see how it, we limited it to five and it already has started to escalate and it could escalate very much from here. We're not going to allow it to do so. Look at this room though. It's like, we're, I mean, like, we're like kids in a candy store. Well, I mean, we, I can, we can keep doing this. What I like about the Mississippi Sippers, what I like about the folks we hang out with, the folks you see on this channel a lot, mm -hmm. is they all have selections over collections. It is not about just storing whiskey and looking at it. Every one of these are meant to be opened and there are, I mean, there's a lot of scotches you see, but y'all also see some of my favorites there. We've got Coy Hills and, you know, freaking Jack Daniels single barrels and rums and- you got your high west. Got a whole bunch of high west stuff. I'm gonna show y'all the whole selection here and y'all tell me what I should have drank so that next time I come, I'll try it. So now y'all have a general idea of what's here. Let me know what I should have tried that I did not try while we were here. Scotch, bourbon, whatever. Next time I'm here, we'll give it a try. The premise is definitely wrong. Not all scotch drinkers are assholes. I'm finding some I'm okay with, but I feel like to find a scotch I'm okay with, it has to not taste like a scotch. And that's just kind of defeating the purpose. And so if there's a particular scotch you think will convert me, the one that tastes like a scotch, but is absolutely delicious, or just let me know down in the comments your favorite scotch. Appreciate y'all watching. We'll catch y'all in the next one. This video is being brought to you by absolutely nobody. We don't have a sponsor for this video. So the team said, why don't we just promote our own stuff? And we've got these cool shirts, like these bourbon hunter shirts right here. The horse collector shirts. We got leather patch hats. Of course, Glen Cairns with Bruzel on them. But realistically, we have to sell a hundred shirts to generate the same amount of revenue we do by just doing an ad for a sponsor. And I just told them there's absolutely no freaking way that people are gonna go to brusel.com and buy a hundred of these off this one video. So there's not a sponsor for this one. I appreciate y'all watching regardless. And if you want some of that stuff, check out brusel.com, help us with our bourbon budget.